each one individually. We're hot on the trail of the three males he's known since they were cubs. Hey there. Nice profile. An impala carcass confirmed Luke's suspicions. The three male cheetahs were nearby, but which direction did they go? They could be anywhere. We weren't taking any chances. Luke had arranged for Wally, a Zulu ranger, to join us at dawn. Luke assured me that if anyone can spot them in this landscape, Wally can. What? There's a cheetah. What? No way. There. Where? Um, stand up a little bit. Look. Uh, the little bush there. Yeah. The smallest tree there. Yeah. Uh, about uh, 10 meters to the right. No. The no. next, the next one. Yes. And then yes. about 10, 15 yes, meters yes, to, yes, the, to the right. I can see her ears. I can see her ears. All right. All right. Well spotted, Wally. Yeah. Sitting up in the grass. Good eye, Wally. Incredible eyesight. Thank you. Wally Thank spotted you. it with Thank his you. little bare eyes, and I could hardly see it through my binoculars. We headed into the marsh for a closer look. Luke thought it was a female. There's the tree. No, I don't think so. It's still here somewhere. At last, right out in the open, Luke recognized the female as a mother with five cubs. She just, she, she just went down. Yeah, yeah, I've lost her. She's hiding from us. Wild cheetah. Nice hand. Oh. Yeah. She is a wild one. She's yeah, amazing. Uh, yeah, she's amazing. I lost her now. We let her go. Her cups must be nearby, and she's very protective. This female was one of the first Namibian cheetahs to come to Penda, sent across by a more sympathetic Namibian farmer. She's already brought up six cubs in Penda, and this litter will bring her grand total to 11, if all five make it. And it looks like they just might. They've already gotten through the first two critical months. In other parts of Africa, only one cheetah cub in 20 survives to adulthood. Here in Penda, at least 12 in 20 are making it through. It's an incredible turnaround and a real success story. But it's also a big job for the mother to keep an eye on them all. The cubs are naturally curious and playful, and they practice the skills that will one day make them successful hunters like their parents. Luke is almost certain that one of the three males we're looking for is the father of these cubs. We had been searching all day, and then suddenly, out of the blue, they just appeared. Just taking a stroll. Wow. The other clutch, I mean, they're still not fully mature, eh? They still have to grow. They're, um, the youngish males, they're just over two years old, and they probably won't hit their full weight until they're about five. These three adolescent brothers are already the dominant males of the park. They were just like street punks looking for trouble. Cheetahs are thought of as solitary animals, but that's just not true of most males. A lone male can't hold a territory, so blood brothers gang up together, often for life. This way, at least, they can smell three times as powerful. So, 
He's the third one marking right now. He's number three. He looks Did... very happy to be marking too. Does he? He's very <laughs> happy about it. They're pretty content, you know. They're they're kind of rulers of all they can see. Just and beautiful. There's not necessarily an order here. They just go up and pee on a tree as they arrive there. You know, it's not like one brother has to go first, and that's always the way. You know, they're so clean. Yeah. You'd think they'd be filthy. Mm -mm. You no, they'll be dirty. clean after. No, yeah, that's a funny thing. Are they very meticulous, like cats? Or like yeah, not as much as the smaller cats, but they are. And I mean, after a kill. You'll see them, they, their bloody face and all the rest of it. They sit down and they clean one another. When they're finished feeding, they're all, there's lots of grooming that goes on with one another. See, there's not, you can what see these... What would these guys do if, what would these guys do if we, not that we're going to, but what, if we went on foot? Would, um, that, would that flip them out a little bit? You know, yeah, it, it, there's not much of a chance of attack. Um, there's no... No, but I mean, but they, would, they wouldn't recognize us the way they recognize us in the vehicle. That's right. The vehicle the seems to um, remove the human element. Right. You know, and so they ignore the vehicle. We're, we're, not, we're neither a threat, we're no interest, we're... We, we don't exist to them, which is nice, I think. Oh, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Luke has lived alongside this group since they were cubs. They know the sound of his Jeep, and they've learned to ignore it. This invisibility allows him to study totally natural behavior. And last week, he found himself witnessing a unique moment when they suddenly stumbled across the cubs. The cubs were waiting in the palm scrub for their mother to return from hunting. Male cheetahs can be aggressive. Amongst the big cats, males do occasionally kill cubs because they could grow up to be rivals. But this male senses the cubs could well be his. Then the mother returns, and the situation gets more complicated. The mother yelps to the brothers, and they hiss at her. Their aim with every female is to keep her captive and try and mate with her. All this female wants to do is to get her cubs away from her. They're looking worried. The brothers have blocked the route between the mother and her cubs. They won't retreat until they're sure whether or not she's in season. All the mother can do is give a reassuring bird-like chirp to her cubs and a submissive call to the three brothers. No one seems to want to make the first move. Eventually, the mother takes the risk to the male's obvious displeasure. Keeping a submissive posture in deference to her captors, 